we are just a few weeks, or weeks, okay, days away from the new year. Weeks. I, this shows I am not ready yet for 2016. Are all of you ready for a brand new year, for what it has in store? I bet we're, I bet we're across the map here. And some of you may be really excited. You've got a whole bunch of New Year's resolutions, a whole new practices and habits you want to set into motion. You're just going to make this New Year awesome. And others of you are saying, yeah, I'll make and break a few resolutions in the next few weeks and then be done with it. Well, wherever you are on your New Year's resolutions, I want to tell you that God is all about new beginnings. God is the God of new beginnings. And a few weeks ago, I was just changing channels on TV and I stumbled across the annual airing of The Sound of Music. And my son perked up all of a sudden because the kids were singing with Maria. And every time there was some sort of, you know, just speaking parts or where the plot is moved along, my son would leave and go do other things. But every time the kids started singing on The Sound of Music, he would perk up and pay attention. And these were kids who didn't know how to sing until Maria came into their lives, and then she taught them. And how she taught them was this. Let's start at the very beginning, a very good place to start. And that makes a lot of sense to me. So let's start at the very beginning to prepare ourselves for this new year. I think it's an important place to start at the beginning. If we start at the beginning, then we know that there's another step after that, and we have a purpose, and we have a goal. We have a place to start and a place to go. And maybe that's what we all would like to have as a new year gets underway. We want to have a, pur a purpose. We want to have a place to start, or maybe permission to begin again or to begin in a new way. And the Christmas story is all about beginnings. And lucky for us, the season of Christmas lasts for 12 days, beginning on Christmas Day and ending on January 6th, the day of Epiphany. It's nice how we get to end one calendar year and begin a new calendar year, hearing God's promises of God's presence with us for those 12 days in a special way. Even though we know God is present with us every day of the year, we have these 12 days of Christmas to carry us along. And the radio may have stopped playing Christmas songs, but here in church, we know that we can keep on singing Christmas songs at least for another 10 days because we're only on the second day of Christmas. And so today we took a look at a different Christmas story, the Christmas story according to John. And John tells us this Christmas story without including Mary or Joseph or the angels or the shepherds or a stable or a star. John skips all of those things and focuses completely on Jesus. In John's gospel, we hear that Jesus offers the world a new beginning. Even while John tells us that Jesus even existed at the beginning of time with God. Jesus always was, and Jesus has come to start a new beginning for us again. So listen again to the beginning of John's gospel. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him. And without him, not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. In these opening words from John's Gospel, we learn that Jesus is called the Word. And when John mentions the word, he doesn't mean words like I'm speaking to you right now. He means the word, capital W, meaning the message sent from God. God's very heart, the essence of God sent to us in the person of Jesus. 
this person of Jesus that has been in existence with God from the beginning of time. And John also calls Jesus the light. And when Jesus was born into our world, it was like God flipped on a light switch and shed a whole new light on everything. But yet it was a light that has existed from the beginning. Our gospel starts out with the words, in the beginning, God was doing something brand new, but it ties back to what God was doing at the very beginning, beginning. I don't know if you're familiar with how the Bible is put together, but the very first book is called Genesis. And the very first words of the very first book of the Old Testament of the Bible say, in the... Yes, see, I put it up on the screen so you would know. In the beginning, it starts out the same way. And it says, in the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless void and darkness covered the face of the deep while a wind from God swept over the face of the waters. Then God said, let there be light. And there was light. Did you hear the common words between the beginning of Genesis and the beginning of the Gospel of John? They both say in the beginning, they both speak of light and life and darkness. Perhaps John, the Gospel writer, wanted to show that God was doing the same kind of powerful creating work all over again, this time in the person of Jesus. In Genesis, we hear how God spoke a powerful creating word and set the universe into motion. And whether you believe that God created everything in seven days or whether you believe that God created through the process of evolution over billions of years, What John says is no matter how it happened, God was what existed before anything else existed, and God's powerful word set it into motion. God brought light into darkness at the beginning of time, and then God brought light into our darkness through the person of Jesus to heal the sin, to heal the brokenness in ourselves and in our world. Light and life over darkness and death. That's what's on God's agenda. That's what God's New Year's resolution is. Well, okay, maybe it's not a New Year's resolution. It's a new life resolution. It's a new creation resolution. It's way bigger than just a New Year's resolution for 2016. Light and life over darkness and death. That's God's mission. That's God's priority. That's God's resolution. So what's on your New Year's resolution? It maybe makes all of the things you've been thinking about for your New Year's resolution is quite small and manageable in comparison to light and life over death and darkness. It puts things into perspective, doesn't it? And if you have taken time to put together New Year's resolutions, Have you taken into account your whole self, your physical, emotional, mental, spiritual health in the mix, and how you relate to one another and to this whole world that God has made made for us? That puts our New Year's resolutions into a different light, I think, beyond just losing 10 pounds and controlling our spending better. Those are, of course, always on my New Year's resolutions, but When I think of them in terms of what God has done, it makes me rethink a whole lot of things. So if you are still open to some ideas before you enter into this new year, and if you are still accepting ideas for your new year's resolution, I would like to propose some ideas for your list. And I got these ideas from a strange place. I read a book by a scholar who studied the lives of the ancient desert monks. Okay, now don't fall asleep. I don't want to lose you. Seriously, the ancient desert monks are actually very interesting people, okay? And they have some things to teach us that we may be able to put into our New Year's resolutions that are in line with God's plan for the world. So about 1,500 years ago, these desert monks were fed up with the church. 
They just didn't like how people were doing church. They wanted to serve God and get back to the basics and leave all the bickering of church behind. That just seems so crazy because churches today don't ever have any struggles. There's never any disagreements, any different views of how we can best worship God and how to best serve others. But anyway, back then, 1,500 years ago, these desert monks said, let's get out and start something new. Let's serve God out in the desert where we can just be pure and free. But they were very wise in what they hoped to do. They made some resolutions for themselves as they set out in this new community. And their first resolution was this, never stop starting over. That sounds really good. Never stop starting over. God never stops forgiving us. God never stops loving us. God never stops renewing our spirits. We have a God that never stops starting over. So that should be the way we live also. The second resolution is this. Live intentionally not aimlessly. I think that's really important for all of us. We don't know how our lives will turn out this year. We do not know the things that lie before us. But yet we can live with trust in God and we can live with intention. We can live knowing that how we live our lives, what we do with them, matters to God and matters in this world. And I encourage all of you to take the Life Keys course that we just completed in December and we'll start another course in February. But in that course, one of the goals is that we learn about who we are in the eyes of God and how we can live intentionally and not aimlessly. The third resolution is don't give in to despair. That's really important for us as individuals, not to give in to despair, to know that we are forgiven, we are armed with God's grace, but that also helps us look at the world and all the situations and hard things that happen in this world and not give in to despair. We can look at the hard things of terrorism, of people who are refugees, millions of them who are trying to find homes. We can look at acts of violence in our own communities, brokenness that we see around us, but we don't have to give in to despair because we have a God who is about new beginnings and God can work through all of us to bring light and life into this world where there is so much despair. So do not give in to despair. Keep on loving God and loving your neighbors. The fourth resolution is this. Keep praying. I know that seems like a simple one, but it isn't always simple. We don't always know what to pray or how to pray or how to respond to God in prayer, but keep praying. The very act of praying tunes our ears to listen to God and teaches us also how to speak to God. And it shapes us in the way that God would have us be when we pray. So keep on praying. Whether things turn out the way you want them to or not, keep praying. Then the fifth resolution, stop judging others and instead think well of them. None of us is perfect. I think everyone is just doing the best that they can. And everyone has bad days. And other people have different points of view, and that is okay. I think if we all worked on not judging each other and instead thinking well of each other, I think that would be a gift to the whole world. It'd be a gift to you, it'd be a gift to me, it'd be a gift that we could give one another. And I think it would transform all of us. And then finally, the sixth resolution, live as though you are loved by God. Now, that seems simple too, but it isn't always simple. We don't always realize that we are loved and valuable to God. 
How would you actually change the way you live if you believed each day that you were loved by God and the people that you met that you also believed they were loved by God? When little kids come up for communion, I often tell them, since they don't receive communion yet, you are a child of God and God loves you. And that's something they need to be reminded of all the time. But it's also something that I say to people who are near death or who aren't able to take communion for whatever reason. I remind them, you are a child of God and God loves you. We all need to be reminded of that. I think it's a good resolution. And then I was asked to put a seventh resolution that I don't have a slide for, but my, my seventh one is inspired by the Force Awakens. May the Force be with you. You know, I was the only one in the movie theater who said, and also with you. <laughs> but we know who the Force is, capital Force. It is our God, and that's a good thing to be reminded of. So I want to recap these New Year's resolutions. The first one, never stop starting over. The second one, live intentionally, not aimlessly. The third one, don't give in to despair. The fourth one, keep praying. The fifth one, stop judging others and instead think well of them. And the sixth one, Live as though you are loved by God. The thing about these resolutions is that even though these ancient desert monks were leaving one church community to start a new kind of community, they did it in such a positive way. Is there any negativity at all in these resolutions towards other people? No. They, it says they weren't about judging others. They weren't about speaking ill of them. They were just hoping to live intentionally. They were still praying. That's beautiful. The place that they left behind, they still hoped would be serving God and that God would be leading. But they were starting something new and hoping that God would be with them too. In their new beginning was hope for what had already been begun before and hope for what God would do in the future through them and through everyone else in this entire world. That's so beautiful, starting in a way where you're not bashing anyone else, just praying for God's light and life in your life and in others. I think Maria von Trapp was right. Let's start at the very beginning, a very good place to start. We can start with God's light and life, and know that that wins over death and darkness every time. Amen. Amen.